Welcome everybody, Wednesday, February 14th. John Arvosis here with the Arvosis Report coming to you live from Washington, DC. Hey guys, I can see you all in the chat, which is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> after our glitch the other night. Hopefully you guys can hear me fine. Uh, let me get TikTok going. TikTok is like unusually orange tonight, but pff, whatever. It does, TikTok does what TikTok will do. Um, all right, TikTok, let's go live. Woo! Ended up with a, well, not a lot of news, but big news today. So we will talk about that shortly. Boom, there we go. Oh, anyway, hello all. Hmm. So yes, my display cases are finished. They're filled, although now I'm, where are they? There they are, for you guys. Now I've got to sort of figure them out. Hey guys, hey TikTokers, let me, uh, I think I just did the mirror, right? Yeah, yes. Um, but yes, the display cases are done. Thank you, Cornflower, for the gift. I just finished the display cases, stuff is in them, and now I've got to kind of, now it takes several days of every day looking and going, eh, and moving stuff around. But anyway, hello all. Hey, Seattle, kitchen monkey. Uh, hey, wait, hey, guys. So busy day, busy day. Um, Privit, Marie. Kozache? Ko uh, Kozache. Is that like Cossack, maybe? Or is that, co no, that's Koz. It's not Kos, it's Koz, I think, right? Is that Cossack? I'm, I'm going to guess. Uh, hey, Scott. Anyway, hey guys, so yes, um, I know yesterday was fun. That ended up being sort of a surprise, but hey, hey Bryce, thank you. Oh, is it Marie? Okay, thank you. Uh, hey Dawn. Um, yeah, yesterday was fun. We sort of, at the end of the show, had sort of a, a military question, and Sam joined us, who's a longtime you know, friend here of the show. Thank you, Brian and Dawn. Um, so Sam joined us, and then Yulia was here from Ukraine, and she joined in because she's a, now a journalist in Ukraine back there. She's been in New York forever. Thank you, Pinswarm and Chris. Um, and it was really interesting. And both of them came on, and it was a, it was a really neat discussion. So uh, very interesting. Today, well, today was a slow news day until right now, and now it became a huge news day. <laughs> Thank you, Martin, and Succeed. Now it's a huge news day today right at the moment. Uh, but yeah, that was fun yesterday. I never quite, well, I never quite know how that's going to work when you have guests come on, you know what I mean? Because you just don't know. And having two, I was a little worried because you never, you know, you like to kind of have people be able to talk, but it's kind of hard. Um, hey, Von Sparklebum. Uh, hey, Critter, thank you for that. Yeah, that was fun. Anyway, that was fun yesterday. So yes, I need to, well, now that I know too that I can get guests on TikTok and I could use my microphone here to at least let you guys hear them on YouTube because my concern was having them just on TikTok and YouTube can't hear them and it's just, not convenient. So anyway, we will do that. Uh, yeah, so today is a very interesting news day, guys. We're going to be talking about uh, the big news that it appears Russia plans on putting nuclear weapons in space. That's kind of fun. Very Cuban Missile crisis -y of them. Um, and also Ukraine sank a Russian ship, a Russian warship, uh, and did a lot of damage. I mean, sank the thing. Crew didn't get off either, apparently. So big deal. Um, in any case, so welcome, guys. I am John Aravosis. This is my show, The Aravosis Report. We talk every night about Ukraine, uh, Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern. Also talk about national security in general. Also talk about the U.S. election. Just kind of depends on the news of the day. Thank you, Allie. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. Um, the, um, so, yeah, let, let's just jump right in, guys. So today is day two, uh, 720 of Vladimir Putin's special three-day military operation in Ukraine. The big story today. Okay. It appears the U.S. has intelligence that Russia is planning to put nuclear weapons in space. Thank you, Shikru. That is a big deal. Thank you, Laura, for the rose. That is a very big deal. Um, that is very dangerous. Thank you, Laura. Um, let me kind of give you the story. So this has been developing all day, okay? So earlier in the day, we had Mike Turner. A, and actually, honestly, he was right. Everybody was sort of presenting this story as, if you were following, some of you this may be new, but if you were following this story today, there was this sort of sense of, is this guy kind of like making stuff up? Is it partisan? Is it political? Whatever. Mike Turner is a Republican of Ohio. He is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Um, he is a very conservative guy. He is a good conservative. He's not really MAGA. Um, he's not, thank you, Charles. He, um, he is very pro-Ukraine. He is not pro-Russia. He is not 
a Putin sycophant, which too many MAGA Repo actually all the MAGA Republicans really are, uh, and the elected ones certainly. Um, they've you know because Trump is pro Putin and anti anti US really. Thank you, Martin. Trump is pro Putin. MAGA has to be pro Putin. They can't criticize Russia because Trump's got some weird deal with Putin that we don't know what it is. Mike uh, Turner does not abide by that. Very concerned about Russia, recognizes that Russia is America's enemy. Um, and he is, and he's all of our enemy. Russia is. They, they always have been, and they still are. There was maybe 10 years where maybe they weren't in the 1990s, and then 20 years where we were hoping they weren't our enemy from like 1900, or 19, excuse me, from almost the year 2000 to today. And then they invaded Ukraine. Thank you, Marie. And we all went, uh-oh, and now forget it. So the big news today, and I, this is this is a big deal, guys. This is a big deal, guys. So the um, mods, feel free to just, uh, oh, never mind. Actually, people are being okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> people weren't being okay. No, that was okay. All right, whoever just took that person off, what did you do on, on TikTok? The guy wrote in all caps, but he that was a normal thing he just wrote. He said they never learned their history. I don't think he was talking about us. Well, who took that? Who took that person out? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. I mean, don't do that, but be careful with who you're, who you're muting. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ash. Yeah. Just be careful with, because initially I thought it was somebody being critical, but then I read it again and went, oh, I think he's been critical of Russia. <laughs> so sorry. Sorry, Mark Meltzer. It looks like you got caught by accident. Um, so yeah. So the story today, initially the story came out this morning or this afternoon, and we heard that this Republican chair of the House Intelligence Committee was very concerned about something and it dealt with American national security, a grave threat. We then heard it, it involved Russia and called on President Biden to declassify the information to make it public, right? Um, and we were all trying to figure out what is this? Like, and then we were trying to figure out like, is remember a lot of us were thinking, is this political? Like, what is this, right? Well, as I said, the thing is, Mike Turner is a good MAGA Republican. I mean, he's not a MAGA Republican. He's a good conservative Republican. He's a typical, what Republicans were, conservative Republicans, before Donald Trump be uh, became president, before Donald Trump was running for president. When Trump ran, it just was like, right, everything turned on its head. Thank you, Elizabeth. Republicans no longer believed in defending America. They no longer believed in supporting our troops. They no longer, I mean, and again, I know we're going to get some of the Trump people here are like, that's not true. Yeah, it is true. And if you're a Republican, it's absolutely true. You may defend the troops. Your party does not. The Republican National Committee does not. Donald Trump does not. The number of times that Donald Trump has attacked American troops, he literally called them killers. He literally called them suckers and losers. I don't want to get started on this again. But, but Mike Turner is not like that. He was Republicans before Donald Trump when they supported the troops, when they supported America. They supported America's defense. Thank you, Tigger. And they recognized that Russia was our enemy and Russia was a, posed a grave threat to our country. So he comes out and says, he calls on Biden to declassification of grave national security. And we're all going, what the hell is he talking about? Well, then a couple hours later, we find out it's about Russia. And we're like, okay, that's interesting. And then people are wondering, okay, is he playing a game here because he's a big supporter of Ukraine? Is he simply trying to stir things up and put pressure on House Republicans to move ahead with the Ukraine aid bill that House Republicans have said they will not? Keep in mind, Thank you, Pedro. House Republicans and the MAGA Republicans overall killed aid to Ukraine. That is why no American aid is going to Ukraine. Thank you, Tigger. None right now because MAGA Republicans killed it at the request of Donald Trump. And mostly these guys are in the U.S. House because the U.S. Senate just passed aid to Ukraine. So now it is the House. It is the MAGA Republicans. Um, and we're thinking, like, did he go, kind of go public with this because he's trying to help Ukraine and show Russia's bad? What is it? Well, ABC News came out with a story finally in the last hour or so. New York Times reporting as well. Thank you, Jan Thomas. Keep the gifts coming, guys. I didn't kind of promote that today, but remember, I do do this full time. Uh, and in order to afford doing this, your guys' gifts help me pay the bills. So please do keep them coming. Thank you. You Again, always been very generous with that. So thank you. I hate asking, but, you know, it's the nature of the job, I guess. So ABC News reports, thank you, Anna, that the actual concern is, for, well, okay, let me step back. Then a story comes out suggesting, well, it's not that big of a deal. The intelligence has been known for a while. It's nothing new. It's serious, but it's not grave. And it, they're kind of making it sound like, okay, and, and it involves satellites. And it, like satellite, we're taking out satellites. And we're going, oh, well, that, and frankly, this kind of pisses me off because this almost sounds like it's, this sounds like somebody releasing the information to make it sound less threatening. 
which pisses me off. Because now that I know the truth, this is a very serious issue. Russia wants to put nuclear weapons in space. Very serious issue. But, but the story that then gets leaked is, it's a story that's been out for a while. We've, we've had the intelligence. It just deals with satellites and maybe, maybe taking down satellites. And you're kind of, and I did a video on this earlier, by the way, on TikTok. And I said, well, okay, it depends. If you're saying we're just going to kind of a weapon that can go up there and take out a satellite, that's not good, but that's not earth shattering. I said, if we're talking about like nuclear weapons in space, taking out satellites, that would be really bad. And I said, and if it's putting nuclear weapons in space, that would be really bad. Well, bing, ding, 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 ding. That's what it is. It's putting nuclear weapons in space. Um, this is crazy, guys. So uh, there are no nukes there yet. The nukes allegedly would not be used to, well, like we trust the Russians, would not be used to attack Earth. It would be used to attack satellites. Um, there's a lot of questions here. I'd be very curious getting somebody who's like a nuclear expert, but also a satellite expert, um, as to why, oh, we've got anti-Semites joining us too. How exciting. Wow. Oops, where's my guy? Where's my guy? <laughs> TikTok, have fun, mods. Um, so here's the deal. And I believe this. The U.S. has intelligence saying the Russians want to put nuclear weapons in space. The U.S. has intelligence saying the Russians want to use those nukes to attack satellites if they need to. Um, uh, thank you, James. I don't know if, if that was just a gift. Thank you. If that was something else, feel free to ask a question. See, now that I'm using OBS, I actually can see the gift you guys give. So the little thing with the heart, that's cute. I never could actually see the thing before. I could just see you guys did a gift. So thank you for that. Um, you know, WC Fuel says no need to nuke a satellite. I was thinking about this. Like, why would they want nukes in space? Now, some people are mentioning EMPs, electromagnetic pulses. That's one possibility. Uh, electromagnetic pulses are basically, thank you, Ernie, um, um, I do tend to see gifts, Barry. I may have just missed yours if you just did one, um, but I do tend to see the gifts. Um, just sometimes when I'm talking, I don't always see them. Thank you, Juju. Ju Ju. Thank you, Juju, Ju for that. Thanks, Adventure. Oh, there's Barry. Barry Brown sent a hi, Bear. I'm sorry, Barry. Thank you for that. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of talking about something and I've also got two screens because I've got the YouTube folks over there and then the uh, TikTok folks on my iPad. Thank you, Jay Marie. I will be uh, looking at the other screen and if something pops up, I miss it. Thank you, John S. So I apologize for that. It happens sometimes. I apologize. But thank you. I, I appreciate it. Glad you mentioned it. So here's the thing. Um, thank you, Courtney. Why you would want to set off a nuke in space? Sometimes it would be an EMP, electromagnetic pulse. Thank you, Crazy American and William. Um, electromagnetic pulse, and again, I'm talking as foreign policy guy, not like defense nuclear guy, but I've known about EMPs for a while. You set off a nuke and it throws out an electromagnetic pulse, you know, electromagnetism that knocks out uh, electronic devices. I mean, burnt fries them. Think UFOs right? With all those stories of UFOs and like on TV, when the UFO in the middle of nowhere on the highway comes and the car dies, it's sort of a similar concept, except that the car turns back on and your, your car isn't turning back on if there's an electromagnetic pulse. So you could set off a nuke like high over a city to knock out all the electronics in that city, for example, right? That's one possibility. If, why would you use a nuke to try to take out a satellite? Well, think about this. Starlink has Elon Musk's company, a lot of satellites. And the plan is to put a lot of satellites. Correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. Starlink is talking about putting tens of thousands of satellites in the sky that I recall. Home time just said 40,000. Isn't that the plan? No, that's not how many they've got yet. But isn't that the plan? I mean, 9,000. I mean, how many satellites? Uh, Alexa, how many satellites does Starlink have? Let's see what Alexa says. Alexa, how many satellites does Starlink have? Here's what I found from sciencetimes.com. Starlink is a constellation of over 2,000 satellites in low Earth orbit. 2,000. Okay, Alexa, stop. So Starlink has 2,000 now. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, like I said, but I believe it's tens of thousands of satellites Starlink wants. It takes a while to take out 20 or 30,000 Starlink satellites, okay? Um, especially if you're taking them out one by one. What if you use a big nuke? Could you take a bunch of them out with a big nuke? If there's 40,000 in space? Maybe, right? Would that big, and the EM and the electromagnetic pulse 
from the satellite, uh, not the satellite, the electromagnetic pulse from the nuke in space could take out a lot of them too. Um, this is incredibly dangerous stuff because first of all, here's the, I mean, there's a lot of problems here. First of all, we're going to start having nuclear, I mean, it would be a low, Russia already has a low threshold for using nukes. Um, Russian nuclear policy is, well, two different things. One, nuking us, they have a high threshold, right? We would have to nuke them first. Uh, we would have to threaten Russia's survival, things like that, right? Fair enough. Th same kind of uh, rules we would use for using our nukes. For using tactical nukes, which are the little nukes, the little nukes that they could use in the battlefield in Ukraine, for example, Russia has a very low threshold for those. America and NATO, I should say America, the Brits and the French, have a very high threshold even for using tactical nukes. We don't, in our regular war plans, we don't sort of factor in using our nukes. <laughs> we don't say, oh yeah, we're definitely going to use the nukes, like the small nukes to, you know, soften up the battlefield. No, we don't do that. Russia does. Russia, Russia at least their war plan is, oh, we absolutely would use nuclear weapons if we had war with the West. The fact that then they would have nuclear weapons in space means we should expect them to have a very low threshold for using the nuclear weapons in space. That's very bad. That's very bad. Um, thank you, Barry. Uh, you know, uh, you're not only talking about an arms, uh, an arms control, I mean, an arms, uh, 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 an arms race in space. Thank you, Wider, for the gift. Because if Russia puts nukes in space, how are we not going to have nukes in space, right? I mean, at the very least, right, the nukes to take out the Russian nukes. So now we're going to have nuclear weapons all over. Not to mention, you know, I mean, in principle, right, I mean, nuclear weapons don't just go off. Thank you, too funny. But I don't like the idea of a nuke sitting in space and having a, a problem and coming down to Earth. I mean, at the very least, there's some nuclear material in there. I mean, it shouldn't just blow up because it falls. That's good news. But you know what I mean? Like, you can see the problem here. Thank you, Marie. And there's a Cuban Missile Crisis problem here as well, right? Russia putting nukes in space means, like, A, we have to put nukes in space, which I'm not too thrilled about. B, do we have to draw the line and tell Russia, don't you dare put nukes in space? Because if you do, we're shooting them down. And then what happens, right? I mean, this is very scurious stuff, guys. Now, the other thing, by the way, which is fascinating here, is Elon Musk. This is clearly a threat directed at Elon Musk. And think about the last two years of Elon Musk and how he became literally Donald Trump's mini-me in terms of supporting Putin. Actually, on Ukraine, Musk has been even worse than Trump, if you could imagine it, on Ukraine, right? Right, thank you, thank you, EDMJ. R Musk has been even worse than Trump on Ukraine. Um, total Russian sycophant, totally blaming the Ukrainians. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Chris. Uh, totally blaming the Ukraine. Or cool. No, it was Chris. I did see Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, and I bring you back to a year and a half ago. Remember the story from Ian Bremmer. And this, this is now like a year and a half ago. This isn't the recent one. This is a year and a half ago that Elon, um, before, remember when Elon, we, we heard that Elon was like going to be pulling Starlink uh, out of Ukraine and no longer wanted to pay for it. He was going to pay for it and no longer wanted to. Thank you, Marie. And all this kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't the Crimea attack. It was more generally that Elon no longer wanted to Starlink working with Ukraine and this kind of crap. And we're all wondering what was going on. Ian Bremmer comes out, very long time American, very serious foreign policy guy, very trusty. He says, I spoke to Ian, or Ian, I spoke to Elon and he said he talked to Putin and, uh, and talk to Putin right before Elon started coming out with all of his anti-Ukraine stuff. And one of the things Putin said to him was basically Putin threatened his satellites and did it in a, in a nice, friendly way, but threatened Elon's satellites. Put all of that together now, guys. We had that report like a year and a half ago that Elon Musk had talked to Putin. Putin threatened Musk's satellites. And at the time I said, you know, we have no idea what actually happened. We do know that Ian Bremmer is totally trustworthy. I mean, no, Ian Bremmer is, is a longtime foreign policy guy in America, like very serious, very credible guy. So we did know that, that, that Bremmer is to believed. We do know that Elon Musk, all of a sudden, thank you, Annie, became, became actually became Putin's mini-me on Ukraine. Ukraine's horrible, Russia's great. All the territories Russia's taken deserve to be Russian. Thank you, Vicky. It's the West's fault. You, you know, right? Russia, Russia's blameless, all this kind of stuff. Thank you, Annie, for the eyes. Um, put that in context now with this. And I said at the time, 
I said at the time, couldn't you see Putin saying, gosh, so many satellites you got in space, Elon, it'd be a shame if somebody took them out because if Ukraine's using them, then now you're a party to the war and those satellites are a party to the war, right? Well, this fits very nicely with the Elon story. This is scary stuff. This is very scary stuff. Um, I mean, it's really, it's, and the, and, you know, and the, and the point, <laughs> what is the point? What is the point? Gosh, I don't know. What's the point if we're talking about Russia putting nuclear weapons in space and threatening a new Cuban missile crisis? You failed to see the point there. You're a troll <laughs> or you're not. Okay, thank you. You're not getting the point there. <laughs> like, okay, whoever did that, Ash, no, do not block that person. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude today, but you're being way too trigger happy. The person then wrote, ah, which made it look like they weren't being a troll. So I don't mean to call you out on it, but like we've got to go less heavy on folks. I, as I said, make doubly sure that someone's a troll before you. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to call you out publicly, but I want that guy back. His ah made it, thank you. His ah made it look like he wasn't, no, he may be a troll, but the ah made it sound like he was going, oh, okay, I didn't realize. <laughs> okay, you did sound like a troll, BB, just so you know. <laughs> That's why Ash, okay, it did sound like it when you said, what's the point? <laughs> but yeah, no, I, the ah had just come up. That's why. Sorry, Ash. Thank you, Cheryl. I don't mean, I don't mean to be getting in your case today. Um, and we do. And by the way, just so folks know, we get so many Russians and others that come here just to cause havoc and basically people who hate Ukraine. And it's clearly organized that it's very hard for the mods to have to kind of filter through that. Thank you, Paul, because it's just like nonstop crazy people trying to disrupt and trying to basically make the experience unhealthy for all of you. So it's, you know, so yeah, I'm not trying to be critical. I just, it's just sometimes if we get the wrong people and I see it, I like to bring them back. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, in any case, this is bad. Yeah. So Joan says, what's your thoughts on Russia using this for its EMP? That's what we were talking about earlier. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I'm not a defense guy. I'm a foreign policy guy. So I don't know whether these are, well, first of all, possibly Russia's whole intent on using nukes in space against satellites is EMP. Uh, electromagnetic pulse. Maybe the whole point isn't that a nuclear blast goes off and the nuclear blast takes out the satellite. Maybe the point is the nuclear blast goes off and there's a really large radius of a pulse of electromagnetism that comes out of that black blast and it fries all the nearby satellites. Maybe that's, and it fries a lot more satellites than you would get by simply, you know, shooting a missile at a satellite and taking it out, right? That would take out one satellite. A nuclear bomb going off, if it's big enough, could be a really large EMP, right? Yeah, the Bayfire is saying an EMP. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's the goal. But that means having a big enough bomb that it, it and by the way, it's not going to discriminate. It's going to knock out every satellite within what range, whatever range, you know? Now, does Russia have that capability? What the intelligence appears to be from what we're now seeing from, and again, this story has been growing as the day goes on. So we're still trying to find all the details. The intelligence seems to be, and again, even now the stories are still a little thin. It seems to be that U.S. intelligence has concluded that Russia is preparing to do this, that they are developing the technology to do this. Um, they have not done it yet. The stories seem to hint that they are not capable of it yet. It seems, but not entirely clear. Um, but that this is what they're working on and it's their next step and they've decided to do it, which is pretty freaking crazy. This is, this is insane. Yeah, it sounds like Goldeneye. Yeah, yes, I know. It sounds like something out of, you know. No, this is, and again, what worries me is this is, this is Cuban Missile Crisis, which any of you who don't know what that is, Google it. The world almost went to war in the early 1960s because Russia decided to put nuclear missiles in Cuba uh, 90 miles from the U.S. That's like 120 kilometers from the U.S. And, and John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy said, no, you're not going to do it. We almost went to war. Um, this is this is crazy. This is really dangerous. Um, and it once again, I mean, guys, some of you who are younger will not be familiar with this, but welcome to the Cold War. Welcome to the Soviet Union with my generation. And I would say some people a little younger than me and certainly people older than me. Welcome to what we had to deal with for decades. The Soviet Union which was run by Russia. Ronald Reagan once famously called it the evil empire. He was right. I mean, he was totally right. Reagan, Reagan, it was funny. Reagan, like 
Trump had a way of sometimes saying things <laughs> that were a bit over the top, um, like evil empire, but he was right. He was absolutely right about Russia in that regard. Um, and it's back. And, and, and remember, I mentioned this to Yulia last night, uh, the Ukrainian journalist who was, who was on with us. And I said, you know, I've been saying for a while that Russia is, one, is once again the Soviet Union. You know, this basically evil, imperialist, dangerous, warmongering country. And she said they never stopped being it, which is interesting in a, a very Ukrainian perspective and not necessarily wrong that, you know, Russia never got better. Now, I would say Russia got better in the 1990s when the Soviet Union first dissolved. We had at least a hope there, you know, that Russia was going to get a little better. And then Putin came into office and then and it went downhill. You know, now, let me just say, we are not on the verge of World War III, but we're a step closer. Um, what we are learning about, and this, by the way, this, yeah, I don't think Big Diomede is in danger or little, I always forget which is which. Is Big the Alaska side and Little the Russian side? I should know this because I worked for the state of, or for the, for the senator from Alaska. I always forget which one. But the big diamond, the little diamond are the little islands of America and Russia that are right next to each other. Um, you know, what I also think with this, little, oh, little is ours. Okay, thanks, Jeffrey. I thought we were big. Um, what is also disturbing about this is now you know, and this is one piece of evidence, though. Now you know why we have been hearing so much from European security officials, uh, meaning current defense, former defense types over the last six months, the number of Europeans officials, I mean, senior officials who have come forward and talked about possible war with Russia has gone like from zero to infinity in the last six months, maybe not infinity, but maybe 10 or whatever. It's been a, a large number. And we keep kind of asking ourselves why, like, why, I mean, I worry about Russia too, but why are the Europeans, and is it Donald Trump, you know, abandoning them? What is it? And I think it's all of this. I think for all of us who do national security stuff, there is a growing realization that even though we didn't like what Russia did invading Ukraine, and even though we worried about Russia's future plans, it is almost as if the war in Ukraine has radicalized Russia. That Putin discovered that the only thing Russia has that works is war. And it's got gas that it can sell, gas and oil that it can sell. But that war, war, and this was the same thing for the Soviets. The only thing that the Soviet economy could do was make weapons of war. Their television sets, literally, the, the Soviets used to make television sets that exploded. And they were famous for this. Their TVs would just explode. Um, watermelon. At one point, the Soviets were growing watermelons, and they had a crisis where the watermelons were exploding. And that was the other thing. The watermelons would literally explode. I mean, it was a screwed up economy. And the Soviet economy, the biggest problem was because it was, a, it was a permanent war economy. And as we discussed the other day, war economies are good at building war stuff, but that doesn't build into, eh, it's not the same thing, Mark. I mean, it's really not the same thing though. In the war economy, we're talking, that's all the economy has, right? All the Russians have is war stuff. They don't create anything. Think of, what does Russia create, right? What do they create? America, Europe, Asia. We've got a lot of stuff we create. Ladas. Yeah, they. <laughs> Jeffrey said Ladas, which is a really, isn't that Polish or is that Russian? I forget. A really bad car. <laughs> right. They produce a really bad car, watermelons and TVs that explode. Horrific AIDS crisis. Horrific AIDS crisis in Russia for all of these years. Um, right. I mean, it, it's, yeah, no. This is, but what worries me is, whether the Ukraine, whether the war in Ukraine has radicalized Russia and has basically shown Putin that that the only thing that works for Russia is going to war. And it's the only way, not to mention Russia is a dictatorship. Russia is a dictatorship. So, you know, you're, you're, one of the things he's also realizing is the best way to hold a dictatorship together is going to war. I, I, that's what worries me is that we've now seen a radicalization of Russia. I mean, even more radical than they were. And that is what is worrying the defense officials. And now we're seeing this thing about putting nukes in space. It's all part of this larger kind of the Russians losing, uh, I mean, the Russian government losing their minds and going full bore Soviet Union 19, well, hell, I was going to say 1980s, but there wasn't really a good period. It's not like the 60s were very good. The 50s weren't very good, especially in Europe, what the Soviets did there. 
The 70s weren't very good. The 80s were bad. I mean, the Soviets never really had a good decade as far as that goes. Um, this, is, this is really bad. This is really bad. Um, wow. I don't think there's going to be World War III anytime soon. The problem is anybody who was around during the Soviet years knows what I'm talking about. The, Russia, the Russians were dangerous. The Russians always were, the Russians were always preparing, but they were preparing for war with us. I don't mean preparing in case there's a war. I mean, they were preparing for a war. They always were the Soviets. They were always getting ready to go to war. And we were getting ready to protect ourselves, but the Russians and the Soviets, way more belligerent. Again, Cuban Missile Crisis. And that's what worries me, is, is we are seeing a country that, that is starting to believe the only thing it's got going for it is going to war. And that if it goes to war, it wins. And it's a country that feels it was emasculated because it used to be a big, horrible dictatorship, and now it's a little horrible dictatorship. But when it was the Soviet Union, they had, you know, 14 other countries that they were holding hostage within the Soviet Union, the Russians running the prison, basically, and the Ukrainians and the Baltic states and everybody else were the prisoners. Um, then they had their other prisoners in Eastern Europe that were their satellite states. They weren't part of the Soviet Union, but they were more hostages. You know, Bulgaria, Romania, Poland, East Germany, right? All the Czechoslovakia all the, the communist states in Eastern Europe that were free and independent, but they weren't. They were Stalinist dictatorships run by the Russians. Um, and they lost all of that in 1991. The Soviet Union dissolved and Russia lost all of its hostages. Thank you. Thank you for, who is that? Oh, thank you, Robert. Lost all of its hostages. And Putin never forgave the world. Thank you, Annie, or Gorbachev for that and wants it back. And that's what Ukraine's about. That's what going after the former Soviet Georgia. Thank you, Mustard. Um, it's, it's really screwed up. So thank you, Mustard, again. So it's not, um, you went to Russia in 87. That's interesting. I was there in uh, 84. Yep. And then again in 93, which was interesting to see as well. But 84 was kind of scary. Um, yeah, so I, I don't see World War III happening anytime soon. But Russia is now preparing to go to war with us. And that doesn't mean they will go to war. But it's more than they were doing before. And that's really bad. Ripley. It's where occasionally I do like to answer people who are being trolly. Ripley says, what a joke. How many countries has the U.S. invaded? You see, what you're doing, either you're being a troll or you're not thinking enough. Thank you, Jonathan. When we're talk, like for example, when in this talk did I say using your military is bad? That's not the problem. It's not a problem that you use your military. It's how you use your military and why you use your military. Invading countries? Invading countries isn't bad. I mean, we invaded Germany in World War II. Was that bad? I don't think so. We invaded occupied France. That was okay. We invaded Italy, right? That was, we invaded Japan. <laughs> Invading countries isn't per se bad. What is bad is why you invade them. If you invade them because, you know, you want to commit genocide, wipe out millions of their citizens, which is Russia's plan in Ukraine, and wipe the country off the map, thank you, adventurers, and then literally kidnap their children and move their children to Russia and brainwash them into thinking they're Russians and then give them away to Russian families when they've got family in Ukraine, which is literally genocide, then, then I got a problem with that invasion. Thank you, Cornflower. But the problem isn't invading, right? So there's no problem. <laughs> thank you, Martin. So the problem isn't that the U.S., by the way, the U.S. The U.S. invaded Iraq to kick Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. That was a good thing. That was a good thing. Saddam Hussein had decided Kuwait was no longer going to exist, and he invaded. And he posed a major threat to Saudi oil. And Saudi oil, by the way, every single one of us would be in serious trouble if Saddam Hussein had somehow taken out the Saudi oil fields. Um, so, yeah, invasions are not a bad thing. So I dare you to compare the U.S. invasions. The U.S. has had some invasions that weren't so great. George Bush lied to get us into Iraq the second time. I wasn't happy about that. Afghanistan, there was no choice. Thank you, Vicky. Afghanistan didn't go well, but there was no choice. After 9-11, and they were harboring bin Laden, we had to go into Afghanistan. There was no choice. Grenada was fine, too. Um, Serbia, hell. NATO bombed the hell out of Serbia in 1999. They deserved it, and I'm glad we did it. Serbia had gone into Kosovo and was, again, committing genocide. Ethnic cleansing, wiping out the entire country of Muslims. They didn't like them. They were going to wipe them out, Right? So, yeah, invasions are not, and it's important to bring this stuff up because I, I sometimes respond to people being trolly because it's a point that is a larger point that I think is important for us to, to know and consider. Um, it, it just, it doesn't. And the second thing is, 
it, not even second thing, just that. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you can't point to a good Russian invasion. You can't. You can't. You can point to a lot of good American invasions. Hell, the Russians in World War II even. The Russians were on Hitler's side in World War II. <laughs> I mean, the only reason the Russians were our allies later on in World War II is because Hitler stabbed them in the back. They, they, they did a peace treaty with Hitler and gave him permission to start the war. They said, you go and invade Europe and we're not going to touch you. Don't worry. The Soviet Union will not touch you, you Nazis. Go have fun. Go invade. <laughs> Kill everybody. And we will leave you alone. And Hitler said, this is freaking great because my big concern is the Russians, the Soviets. If the Soviets come after me, this war could be hard. And then two years later, two years later, right? <laughs> the, the Nazis stabbed the Soviets in the back. And, and then the Soviets went, please, America and Europe, will you help us? <laughs> it looks like we're in trouble here. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, anyway. The Red Army saved Europe. Yeah, the Red Army saved Europe and then enslaved half of Europe. The Red Army, first of all, the Red, hey, the Red Army saved Europe after the Red Army in, got Europe invaded because the Red Army told the Nazis, go for it, we're not going to get involved. So A, the Red Army is responsible for Hitler invading Europe. B, the Red Army then helped defeat the Nazis. Of course, we did it too, right? We did it too. I mean, we were the ones supporting the Russians. The Russians wouldn't have even wouldn't have even survived if we didn't help them. I mean, America and Europe with Lend-Lease, the Brits. Um, and three, what did the Russians do after they freed Europe? They took it hostage for 45 years. They installed communist dictatorships in all of Eastern Europe, brutally murdered people, brutal, brutal communist dictatorships in Eastern Europe and killed everybody and imprisoned them for 40 years. Ask any of the Europeans from Eastern Europe on this broadcast today. What a, how great the Russians were coming in and saving Europe. Ask anybody here and they will tell you. They will tell you. I mean, absolutely sickening what the Russians did. Absolutely sickening. So, yeah. All right. In any case. Now, some of these people actually are trolls. So go for it. <laughs> I know you're being nicer. Um, uh, exactly, Biba. No, the, the Eastern Europeans will tell you what these guys did. Thank you, Jetta. It's disgusting what the Russians did. But again, you know, you've either got Russian trolls. Um, well, they did, Peter. 20 million Soviets perished during World War II. Exactly. Um, yeah, they did. That doesn't make them good people. They also killed a couple million Ukrainians. The Soviets did. Um, Stalin killed, was it 20 million? Thank you, Jorge. Give or take, Stalin killed 20 million of his own people. I mean, we are not talking about nice, uh, nice people here, the, the, the Soviets. Thank you, Cornflower screwed up, screwed up dangerous people. And that is why it's so dangerous that Russia's playing games again right now. Um, all right, let me get to a little bit more of the, more of the, nor the, 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 the war news here. That was the big news. Uh, another big story today, Ukraine sank. We, we'll talk more about this in a, in a second when we do our Q&A. Um, Ukraine sank another Russian warship today, uh, overnight. Russia's Klingon. Yeah, the Russians are the, Russians are the, Kl eh, the Klingons we became allies with. I'd say the Russians are more the Cardassians. <laughs> they're not, or well, or the Ferengi actually, in in their own little way, meaning they think they're tough guys, but they're kind of not. Um, but exactly, the Soviet-induced famine in the Ukraine, uh, 40s. It was the 30s actually, I think, Emil. But none the same concept though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so the Ukrainians blew up another Russian ship warship today, sank it. Uh, they used boat drones, boat drones. Yep, in the 30s. That's what I thought. Yep, boat drones. Um, 87 people on board sank the ship. Most of them did not get off. I mean, this was a big deal, what they did. Um, the ship apparently had ammunition on it. Um, it was a big deal. Now, what is interesting is Ukraine, I mean, Ukraine doesn't have a Navy, guys. They really don't. They had like one ship that I think they sank because they didn't want the Russians getting it. Um, Ukraine does not have a Navy. And Ukraine has caused real damage to the Russian Navy. What is particularly interesting about this is that... In principle, Russia is not able to resupply its ships in the Baltic. And when I say resupply, meaning they're not able to sort of get more ships in there. Let me get my map and show. Well, actually, here, I'll get the, get the Ava map and show you, okay? So we've got, and, and my pointer, my mom got me. Um, so you've got Russia, right? And again, some of these are a little confusing because like the Black Sea is here. It looks like another country, but it's not. The Black Sea. Here's Ukraine. 
This is the sea south of Ukraine. Here's Crimea. This sea goes through a little isthmus here in Turkey and gets into the Aegean and then gets into the Mediterranean, right? So here's Greece and Turkey. So it connects via the sea, connects right here across the isthmus and goes into the Black Sea. That's how Ukraine, Romania, Russia, Bulgaria, Turkey, they're, well, Turkey from here at least, they're able to access the Mediterranean and go to the rest of the world, okay? Well, the, um, there is a treaty, the Montreux Convention, I guess it's called from the early 1920s or so, that governs the passage of ships, warships through this area because this is Turkey. Turkey is on both sides. It's like the Panama Canal, right? It's Turkey. Um, the question becomes, is Turkey going to, like, you know, the world does not want Turkey saying no warships can come through here, right? So, or, or ships in general. So there's a treaty that says, if you're not at war, everything's fine. If you're at war, there's a problem. If you're at war, warships of the belligerent countries, so warships of the actual countries at war, in this case, Ukraine and Russia, cannot go through here from the Mediterranean unless they are going back to their home port. It's the Bosporus, exactly, the Bosporus. Unless they're going back to their home port. So ships can come through here, warships can come through here from Russia or Ukraine to go back to Ukraine, to go back to Russia, if they were originally from this port in this area. Well, what happens then is the Ukrainians keep blowing up Russian ships and sinking them. The Russians can't bring in new ships. The Russians can only bring in ships that were originally birthed here to start with. So that becomes a problem for Russia because they've got fewer and fewer ships because in principle, their ships are already here, the ones that have ports here. So it's, it becomes a problem. Um, Russia may have a port in Syria, but it doesn't matter. The problem is Russia cannot bring any more ships into the Black Sea. It can only bring in the ships that originally were birthed there, and those ships are pretty much there. So Ukraine keeps blowing them up, and it keeps going down and down and down and down. So it's very interesting. Um, NATO chief, Fernando says, NATO chief said, we aren't in imminent danger today. No, I mean, I think, you know, the uh, basically, I think the House Republican, Mike Turner, scared the hell out of everybody with it because he didn't, basically, he wasn't allowed to give the details because it's classified. So he kind of put out the general warning that th this is back to the original story we talked about, about Russia putting nukes in space. He put out this warning about a grave threat to American national security and everybody went, oh my God, what's going on? Did the Russians do something? What's going on, right? And scared the hell out of everybody. And that's why you now have like the, uh, by NATO chief, I assume you mean Stoltenberg, uh, the, the secretary general of NATO coming out and saying, there is no imminent danger of war with Russia. That basically, because this is the danger of putting out warnings and not giving details because then people's minds start to go, wah. Now, still pretty freaky. I mean, I know Tim Williams says, I'm hoping it's aliens. I know. I'd be kind of hoping it's aliens too, to be honest. But what do you do? You know, what do you do? Um, all right. A few more stories and then we'll go. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of stories here. We won't do all of them. Um, there's a story from Reuters that Putin, this, this sort of came out in the last week and Reuters is reporting it again, that Putin did in fact approach like America privately and say, I'd like a ceasefire. But basically meaning, let's just stop the war where it is. I get to, mind you, listen to what this proposal was. Let's a ceasefire, which keep in mind, and this also applies to the Middle East. Everybody loves a ceasefire. Ceasefire sounds so wholesome and happy and peaceful, right? We all love peace. Ceasefires are not always a good thing, right? Um, if you're Ukraine, a ceasefire means you give up 17% of your land and it never comes back. Bye-bye, right? That's not, I mean, it, 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 somebody, somebody invades your house and steals a bunch of your property, right? Maybe they've even stolen 17% of your house. They're still living in your garage, okay? And you go to court and the person says, you know what, let's have a ceasefire. I get to keep your garage. I get to keep all your property. I also stole a bunch of your children. But let's stop fighting. Isn't it good to stop fighting? Isn't it good not to fight? And we'll just have a ceasefire and we'll freeze things where they are. Of course, where they are is I stole your garage and I stole some of your children. <laughs> but hey, right, that's, that's the issue now, that actually is what Gaza's doing, InfoMan. Somebody's trying to make this about Israel. Don't go stealing. That, that's my one cardinal sin here. And I, I am not a fan of this. The pro-Palestinian activists, not the people, and a lot of you are pro-Palestinian, that's okay. But the activists have got this thing about trying to you know, politically appropriate every other topic. 
and they go and they spam everything and it drives me a little crazy because it's rude. So don't come here and try to spam about Palestine and Israel and everything else. It's rude. We're not talking about those topics. This isn't your show. It's my show. So don't do it. All right. Um, in any case, uh, so let's get more here. So yeah, so Putin's talking about a ceasefire that would let him keep Ukraine that he already took, 17%. I guess keep the children that he stole. <laughs> I guess take, take the children that he stole from Ukraine. He was indicted, by the way, right, by the International Criminal Court for all the Ukrainian children he stole. Thank you, Swan person. Um, and they could stop fighting and everything would be happy. I mean, so, and the U.S. apparently told him to go F himself, which is good. Uh, a couple more stories. Uh, let me see here. NATO Secretary General says he expects 18 of the 31 NATO members to meet the goal of spending at least 2% of their uh, GDP on defense in 2024. So basically, he's saying 18 to 31, more than half should um, should be able to uh, to meet the NATO goal of spending at least 2% of their economy, the size of their economy, on defense. Um, Germany, by the way, said that they believe the German chancellor, thank you, Joe and Blue Ariel, the German chancellor said today that he believes, Schultz, that Germany will meet the 2% this year, which is good because Germany is not there. And I was actually kind of surprised to see that. So that's very good. Um, a couple more little things. Uh, Germany plans to deliver around three to four times as much artillery ammunition to Ukraine this year than last um, the Netherlands is joining a Latvian led coalition to supply Ukraine with advanced military drone technology. And honestly, that's about it. That's about it. Most of the stuff, I mean, the big story today is, well, second big story is that Ukraine took out another Russian warship, which is a big deal. The top story, of course, is that the Russians, thank you, proper Mike, the Russians are reportedly planning on putting nuclear weapons into space, which is a really just horrific move. Because also, what's next? Do we put, thank you, Sherry, do we put nukes in uh, on the moon, right? I mean, like, what's next here? It's really dangerous. I mean, really incredibly dangerous. Um, anyway. Ay, 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 ay. Anyway, all right, guys. Let's <laughs> rapture us. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, I've that... <laughs> You made me think of, I finally watched uh, all of um, Six Feet Under. I, I watched the beginning of the series like 20 years ago and never kept watching it. And I finally watched all of it. They had an episode where it's a, it's a show about a family that runs a funeral home in California. But there's one episode where this religious, you know, a Christian conservative woman, like, I don't want to say religious right, but like super Bible thumper woman is convinced, you know, the rapture is coming and a truck that has a bunch of sex toys, but inflatable sex toys on it or whatever, gets into an accident and the toys go floating in the air and they're literally sex dolls. You know what I mean? Like people, inflatable women are floating in the air and she looks at it and is convinced it's the rapture and gets into an ac a car accident and it kills her. But it just made me think of that when you said the rapture. I was like, it was the funniest episode. Uh, Yen says, how big of a deal do you think Israel's attack in southern Lebanon? I actually didn't even see that today. Uh, what did Israel do in southern Lebanon? I mean, it may not be a big deal if it was just a tit for tat. You know, uh, the uh, thank you. Uh, who is that? Oh, thank you, Maddie. You know, the Hezbollah in Lebanon has been attacking Israel from the be I mean, from before the war, but from the beginning of the, the latest war. Um, so Israel's been constantly sort of fighting back tit for tat. So I don't know necessarily what, I mean, what actually happened, Jens, you know? Um, what else, what else, what else? Sorry about that. I just, I just don't know. I wasn't sort of paying attention to that today. Um, uh, Jaylene are, says, are we positive this is what the intelligence is about? I mean, I guess no. Uh, I mean, these are the latest news reports. I will say the latest news reports are detailed enough that it's certainly interesting. Um, I'm going to, let me pull up some of my more, um, let me see here. Um, funny people are being, people are being funny and making, uh, making James Bond jokes. Um, yeah. So just to remind folks, cause some people are saying, Whoa, what are you talking about? Um, there is a report, there are several reports out today that Russia is planning on putting nuclear weapons in space. Um, not a good thing. Um, supposedly, they're going to put them there. Thank you, Tom. 
Supposedly, they're going to put them there to... Um, oop, Yasser is leaving the building. Bye, Yasser. Nice to have you here. Um, the uh, Supposedly, they're putting the nukes in space. They haven't done it yet, but they plan on putting nukes in space, nuclear weapons, to take out satellites, which could be... I did not make my hair purple, Ro, no. <laughs> That's got to be the lights coming off the top. <laughs> Thank you. I would not make my hair purple, no. Um, but... Uh, doing it they're putting nukes in space to take out others to take out satellites the question is whether they're probably probably they're planning electromagnetic pulses from the explosions to be so big that it takes out a large number of satellites is my guess um but uh but that's that was sort of the big talking should the baltics be scared i mean we should all be scared that doesn't necessarily affect the baltics that affects everybody you know and the bigger problem is nukes in space means those nukes may not just be for taking out satellites. They may be for attacking Earth. And if Russia puts nukes in space, does that mean we have to put nukes in space? And all of a sudden you have an arms race in space of thousands of nuclear weapons flying around in the air. That's really screwed up. It's really screwed up, you know? I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. So, um, yeah. No, this is, it's a big freaking deal. And unfortunately, it reminds me of the Cuban Missile Crisis too which I'm not happy about. So let me pull this up really quick. I just wanted to look and see any news. I'm checking. I sort of follow a ton of uh, defense people on Twitter. Uh, let me see here. Deet, 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 deet. <laughs> Too funny. Um, let me see. Deet, 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 deet. Actually, I'm going to look at my Ukraine news, folks, because a lot of them are defense people. I have a bunch of different lists on Twitter I use for this. Let's see here. Um, nope, nope, nothing else that I'm seeing right now about this. Now, it's just a lot of other Ukraine news today now. Yeah, not seeing anything else. A fire in Moscow didn't see, but wouldn't be surprised and wouldn't be upset if there were. Um, yeah, nothing else here. You know, we're going to have to see. I mean, the problem is now the Biden administration kind of has to go public with what the hell's going on, because now people are kind of wondering and going, you know, is it's just that like is Russia planning war? Um, let me see. Russia space, uh, Russia satellite. I'll try that. Sasha, stop. Um, here, Politico three hours ago. What we know, although it was three hours ago. Uh, hey, quiet. A vague warning by House uh, committee chair about a serious national security threat Wednesday is related to Russia and space, according to three people. We know this weaponization of its orbital systems. But again, this is the vague, this is the vague story. Thank you, C3. This is the one that doesn't mention nukes. Yeah, this is the, this is the story when basically somebody was trying to put out a story that was, oh, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and then ABC News came out with their story and said, the White House National Security Advisor and leading lawmakers on Capitol Hill sought to allay public concerns on Wednesday after House Intelligence Chairman warned of a national security threat related to a destabilizing foreign military capability. Um, two sources familiar with the deliberations on Capitol Hill said the intelligence has to do with Russia wanting to put a nuclear weapon into space. This would not be to drop a nuclear weapon on Earth, but rather to possibly use it against satellites. Yeah, well, once it's in space, they can kind of do with it what they want, but I'm, you know, you know. Um, yeah, I'm looking here. Let me look here really quick and see if we got anything else. I'm trying to see the other experts who I follow. One second, guys. Um, yep, we know about ABC News. Um, all right, who's this guy with? Washington Examiner, not the most trustworthy news source. They're they're a conservative. Ra I mean, they're literally like a, a conservative activist rag butt. Um, my sources say this is a Russian anti-satellite weapon capable of cap capability designed to destroy or degrade U.S. and allied satellite constellations. Radiation produced by a nuclear explosion would likely cause widespread disruption to these constellations. So he's saying it's the radiation. Maybe. I would think it's the electromagnetic pulse. If it's radiation, that's also really concerning because then it means the Russians want as dirty a weapon as possible. They want as much like nuclear you know, radiation flying around as possible to take out satellites. That would certainly be disturbing. Yeah, Starlink already has several thousand, but the plan is a lot. Um, Alexa, how many satellites does Starlink want to put into space? 
I think that might be too. Oh. Okay, Alexa, stop. So Alexa right there said 12,000. I remember it being a hell of a lot more than that. I, somebody else said 40. I remember it being tens of thousands, not just 12,000. 12,000 is still a lot. Um, so there you go. There you go. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm just sort of looking at more of the... Uh, thank you, Hannah, for the gift there. Um, interesting. CNN. Okay, but yeah, I'm not getting much more here. I'm not getting much more here. Um, yeah, CNN is still not saying... Let me see. I don't think CNN is saying nuclear no cnn is not saying nuclear yet that basically the media is trying to which is good they're trying to be very careful about this um i don't know i mean again it depends what the we don't know what the goal is here we don't know whether it's electric a bottom line is putting nukes in space really scary i think they're trying to be they're trying to be careful with all of this the media which is smart but putting nukes in space like just really and again what worries me is it's one more side of russia going off the rails of Russia just preparing for all-out war, you know? And that's really screwed up. I mean, they, they're just, whoosh. Um, yeah, start looking here a little more. Um, yep, and of course, then the Chinese propaganda is putting stuff out in response to this, of course, defending Russia, big surprise. Um, Oh, oh, there you go. Wall Street Journal now has the story, not on this. Wall Street Journal, Russia buying Musk's Starlink systems in Arab countries, Ukraine says. Oh, that's what we were saying. That's what Vlad was telling me. Yeah, Vlad was telling me they're saying United Arab Emirates and others are buying them for Russia. Any case, okay, we don't have anything else here, guys. This is still, I think we're still waiting to see what sources go public because part of the problem is, not part of the problem, the big problem is this is like highly classified stuff. So people have got to be very careful giving this information out, you know? So, um, whoosh, very scary. What else we got, guys? We went very long last night, so hopefully we, we will probably not do that as much tonight. Um, WC Field says nearly 12,000 satellites are planned to be deployed, I'm assuming by Musk, with a possible later extension to 42,000. There you go. There you go. Who is that? Mike Robes. Thank you, Mike. And Steve is for the Rose as well. And Elizabeth. Um, so that, that's where we got the 42,000 number. Yep, that's it. So the initial plan is 12,000 satellites from Elon Musk, but the goal is possibly 42,000. So there you go. Thank you, C3. Yep. I don't know. Elon Musk should be deported. I think he's a citizen, though, so we're probably out of luck at this point. Uh, thank you, Timothy and Steve. So what else we got, guys? Can Russia even afford to put nukes in space? Soviet Union did it. I mean, not nukes, but... Soviet Union built up quite the nuclear arsenal and quite the military arsenal. They didn't have money. Thank you, Tiger Pug. You know, I mean, I don't quite understand the, econ uh, the economics of dictatorship. Thank you, Frank. But somehow they're able to, they were able to do this. So I, I wouldn't necessarily doubt. I mean, Soviet Union was, was you know, on the verge. They finally collapsed. But, but actually, Putin dissolved them. Would they have collapsed? Collapsed? Not Putin. I'm sorry, Gorbachev. You know, if Gorbachev hadn't dissolved the Soviet Union... They might have been able to stick around and still continue to be a real PITA. You know? I mean, you know. Well, that's a possibility, too. Aaron says, Soviet Union marched around with empty missile heads. Yeah, you know. Oh, man. Um, no, Danny. It's not a retaliation to America moving nukes to the UK. That would be insane if Russia did it in response to that. Because, first of all, Russia did it first. Russia moved nukes to Belarus. That is why America might be moving some tactical nukes to the UK because the Russians did it. And we're trying to say, OK, if you're going to do it, you're going to pay a price and we're going to do the equal thing you did. Russia has no right to even respond to us moving nukes into the UK if, in fact, we're even doing it. We don't even know if we're doing it. But if we're doing it because right, we were responding to Russia, they did it first. But also putting nukes into space is like going crazy. But again, this is Putin and this is Russia. Everything is, I'm going to do it 100 times worse than you. Because, again, A, Russian insecurity. 
B, Russian hubris. So it's pride, we're the best in the world, and B, everybody hates us and thinks we're scum, <laughs> right? So it's this weird, this weird by mentality that the, that the Russian government sort of has. Um, and part of it is now the warmongering thing. You know, thank you, Jeremy. It's, it's, no, it's, it's bad, you know? Do the Russians have the technology? Apparently they're still working on it, supposedly, you know, supposedly. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't put it, why put it past them? I mean, Russia screwed up a lot of stuff, but at the same time, you know, they do have rockets. They do, you know, right? I mean, they, they are able to pull a lot of stuff off. I mean, I, I, I would not put it past them, I guess, put it that way, right? You know? Um, would the USSR have done something like this if they were still around? Sure. I mean, it depends what you mean by would they. Of course they would if they could. I mean, meaning they were not nice people. Having said that, Reagan, of all people, was able to reach a lot of really good arms control treaties with the Russians, with the Soviets, you know? Um, although that helped because it was Gorbachev, because it was Gorbachev, you know? Paruski? Why? Ya gavriyu nimnoga Paruski. So what's the problem, Igor? So now can we talk? Huh? <laughs> he said, learn some Russian, then we can talk. Yo, uh, Chiso Paruski, Vunivesichet. So, already did. Good try, though. <laughs> um, Come on, Sasha. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? What are you doing? My crazy dog. Um, if I hear, I would, I would drop my mic, but it's suspended, so I can't quite drop it. Drop. We'll pretend that was a mic drop. Um, Craig says. Do you think the Chinese are going to be happy with Russian nukes in space? <laughs> That's a very good point. That's a very good point. That's, they haven't always been the best of friends. That's a very good point. Yeah, the Chinese probably would not be real thrilled because Russian nukes can be used against China. And how are these nukes going to be, you know, oh, hey, user 682 from Germany. Thank, hey, Joe, thank you for that. How are Russia's nukes going to discriminate and, you know, go after America's satellites, but not the Chinese satellites that are nearby, right? I mean, one assumes these satellites don't like hang out in their own neighborhoods. Like there's the American satellite neighborhood and the, I mean, right. I mean, satellite, well, sir, not satellites that, that traverse the globe, right? If they're geostationary, that's a different, or geos is it geosynchronous? What do they call it? Um, I always forget, but you know, if they stay in one spot, that's another story. The dog, <laughs> the dog is back in there. I do hear you. Hi. Yes. Okay. Ready? She brought me the toy. You ready? Go get it. Go, 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 go. It's over there. Now she lost it. Great. I threw it around the couch and she's still looking at me. I'm like, well, it's gone now. I don't know what you want from me. I mean, I do know what you want from me. She wants me to play. I'm not, I know. Hi, I'm not playing right now. We'll play afterwards. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Oh my. So geostationary. There you go. Is geosynchronous. What is geosynchronous? Is that where it's like orbiting, but orbiting in the same path? I'd have to, I'd have to, normally I'd Google it, but I'm on with you guys. I got you. I if they could see you okay there we go you ready there you go oh my god i know you hate being held up i know it's okay she just hates it when i pick her up like this look at her she's looking around like in panic hey you okay okay oh, i'll put you down okay there you go all right hates it just uh yorkie Bijan. not not dissimilar to a maltese though yes yes you but loathes it when i pick her up just that's why she's always sits there and she's like <laughs> Are they the same, Bruno? Okay. No, but Ripley's saying geosynchronous is when it matches the Earth's rotation. Geostationary is when it matches the axis as well. Okay. Okay. I'd have to kind of think about that one. <laughs> um, to provide coverage in one place. Right. Sasha. Exactly. Sasha. Um, but then what's, what's the difference between... I'm still not getting the, ge the difference. Right, geostationary would be one point on Earth. I would imagine that. It just stays in the same place. There are two orbits for satellites, stationary and low Earth orbit. Okay, now we're getting into way too much complication here. Way too much complication, I know. Um, I don't know. I'm not convinced the West is going to... What I What is interesting about this news is... The problem is, look, Republicans, MAGA Republicans are a cult. I mean, I was going to say... Maybe this news about Russia want, planning to put nukes in space 
will shake up Republicans and start to stop them from being the commie peaceniks that they become, right? The, they, they love the enemy. They hate America. They hate our troops. Maybe the MAGA guys will start to recognize Russia as a threat, but they won't because Donald Trump loves Russia. Donald Trump loves Putin. Actually, I shouldn't even say love. Donald Trump clearly owes something to Putin. Putin has something on Trump, clearly. And Russia proving itself a threat by wanting to put nukes in space, Donald Trump is probably going to, Donald Trump will probably defend this. Let's wait and see what Trump says. Let's see if Trump puts out a statement on this. I will be very surprised if Trump puts out a statement criticizing this. Now, the only thing he might do from Trump, he won't criticize Putin. He'll criticize Biden. He's going to say, this is another thing happening that wouldn't happen if I were president because I had great relations with Putin. That's what Trump's going to say. So he's not going to criticize Putin, but he's going to criticize Biden that it's happening. Just watch this. But yeah, the MAGA Republicans, nothing will wake up the Republican Party so long as Donald Trump is around. Nothing. It is a cult. It is a full on cult now. He hates our country. He loves our enemies, period. He hates our way of life. He hates our freedoms. He hates the rule of law. He hates our troops, which he said repeatedly. And he loves our enemies. He took the Bible thing a little too, he doesn't really believe in the Bible too much either, but he took that one biblical thing a little too much to heart about love thy enemy. That's the only people he loves, himself and, his, and our enemies. Um, the Republicans will not come around on Russia until Trump is gone. And even then, he's created now this whole movement of America haters in America and people who, 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 prefer, who defend America's enemies over America itself. That's not going away. Um, but so this, this information, I think Republicans are going to do what they always do. They, they, they're, they're just going to ignore it. They're going to ignore it. I mean, they've ignored America's national security anyway, right? What are they going to do? They're not going to do anything different. Just wait and see. But I, I, will, I, will, I will be enraptured if Republicans take this news and actually decide to accept that, that, that Russia's a threat. But it's not going to happen. Thank you, Kevin. It's not going to happen. Putin's got some, either Putin's got something on him or Putin bribed him. It's one or the other. I mean, you know Trump. You know Trump, right? It's all about himself. It's either, it's, it, if in terms of people he likes, it's because they suck up to him. If they're people in power, it's because they can give something to him. They've already given something to him or they're holding him hostage. So, um, Cecil says, got an American military buddy stationed in Estonia. Do troops just get pulled out if Estonia gets threatened or attacked? Same for other border countries. What do you mean? What do you mean? We don't remove the troops if they get attacked. No, what do you mean? Well, under Trump, sure, yeah. Under Trump, they would, yes. Yes. Yes, if Estonia got attacked, I think Donald Trump would simply remove American troops. Yes under normal pro-American leaders and under NATO doctrine and under our treaty obligations, if, if Estonia gets attacked, American troops stay and fight and Americans die and we go to war with Russia is, what, is what's supposed to happen. But under Trump and under the MAGA Republicans, by the way, the other problem we've got is the MAGA Republicans in the House of Representatives, even under Joe Biden. If Europe gets attacked today, Trump isn't going to like it. Trump is going to want to defend Putin and the MAGA Republicans in the House of Representatives and the Senate are going to defend Putin. So good luck getting any defense of Estonia or anybody else in Europe. Like I said, other than the UK, I don't think America will defend anybody. Thank you, Macab. Certainly not under Donald Trump if Russia invades, but even under Biden, the Republicans simply won't fund it. Now, it's dangerous as hell. It's dangerous as hell. Why would he defend Putin? Because Putin's got something on him. Why wouldn't he defend Putin? Donald Trump only defends Vladimir Putin. He literally has repeatedly criticized the U.S. and defended Putin on every single freaking issue. He defended Putin on Ukraine way back at the beginning of his, I think it was actually the year, it was either the year before when he was running for president or, or right when he had just become president. I watched, I watched an interview with Trump and he talked about Crimea and said, well, Crimea, uh, that was okay. Because Crimea was Russian anyway. They spoke Russian. They wanted to be Russian. So what Putin did in Crimea, that was totally okay. It's like, no, that was not totally okay. And it wasn't Russian. It wasn't Russian any more than Quebec is French. <laughs> like, or any more than America is English because we speak English. <laughs> it's really not, it was not Russian, no. Um, this is all he does. Yes, he will defend Putin. He's, def I mean, God, he even claimed that Putin didn't attack our elections. 
Trump's own people concluded that Putin, and everybody knows Putin attacked our elections in 2016. Trump's own people knew it. Trump came out and criticized them and said, no, they're wrong in front of Putin. Why would he do, why wouldn't I believe him? He said on national TV in front of the world in Helsinki, Trump said this, and we all went, what? Shocking, shocking performance by an American president. The man literally works for Vladimir Putin. It is, it, or whether he's corrupted by Putin, whether Putin offered him a bribe, who knows? Who knows? Damn, I mean, I, I, again, I'm as, as somebody who is, thank you, Tiger Pug, you know, I used to be a, re, a Republican who was a hawkish on defense. I mean, my God, I, I can't even believe Republicans would tolerate this kind of stuff. It's so sickening. Un, unbelievably sickening. Oh. No kidding, too funny. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I'm not sure what you meant, Cecil. What is, uh, I mean, if they don't fund it, will they just sit there and wait? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll pull them out. I mean, we would just pull them out. You know? Interesting. That's an interesting point, though. You're right. Like, what would the president do? If it were Biden and, and Russia were to invade, and now they, would, they could kill their money. I mean, Congress could just, Republicans in Congress could just say, no money will be spent on American troops in Europe. The only money that can be spent is removing them and bringing them home but you can't spend any money on keeping them there. And now, literally, there's no money to run the bases. There's no money to give them food. There's no money to do anything. Give them gas. So all of a sudden, they're sitting ducks. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yes, Rebel, there is. Is there really some big, scary Russian invasion waiting because we won't give our hard-earned money? Yes, there is. Um, it's not happening tomorrow, but it's happening the fact that Russia is now planning to put nuclear weapons in space is part of the whole long, long, long plan. Thank you, Super Hornet. This is this is the Cold War. This is what a bunch of lived of us lived through with the Soviet Union. It was not that there was going to be a war tomorrow, but it's that they were planning for a war with us. Thank you, Grandma. And the Russians are now planning for war with us. And it's going to be in Europe is the plan. And that was the concern from the beginning. And now it's even a greater concern now that after Ukraine, the Russians are moving on and they're going to start testing NATO. And after what Trump said about NATO, the fact that he's not going to get involved. And by the way, Trump didn't just say it about those who don't pay. He actually said three years ago, the U.S. is pulling out of NATO and we are not defending you, any of you, he told Ursula von der Leyen, who's one of the top European Union officials. Um, Putin knows he can... Uh, uh, yeah, no, this is... this. Just because war isn't happening tomorrow doesn't mean war isn't happening. There is a much increased chance of war with Russia now than there ever was on, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. We are back to the Cold War again. We are back to worrying about Russia going to war with us. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, yes. And the Ukraine thing was one piece of it. But Trump is another piece. This BS with the and all of the MAGA Republicans now supporting Trump, defunding Ukraine is another piece. The satellites... Putting, putting nuclear weapons in space is another piece. You know, it's, it's insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, the, how, the bill isn't going anywhere. The bill's already gone to the House. It's not going anywhere, George. The bill for funding Ukraine. The House decides if it wants to. So the Senate passed legislation a couple days ago supporting aid for Ukraine. The House of Representatives, get the Republicans get to decide, <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth, get to decide if they want to bring the bill up. If they say we're not going to bring the bill up to be debated and voted on, it's not going to happen. So they said, we're not going to do it. So it's dead. I mean, this is the problem. It's dead. So it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, James, you're adorable. Democratic talking points. Russia's bad. Well, I don't know, James. Do you have a problem with genocide? Do you have a problem with stealing children from countries you invade and taking them home and forcibly giving them to other people? when they've got family back home and saying, well, now you're Russian, right? Do you have a problem with putting nuclear weapons in space? Oh, I don't know. Do you have a problem with attacking America's election and trying to steal it? Oh, I don't know. So yeah, tell us, do you have a problem with invading Europe and taking half of Europe hostage for 45 years? How about killing tens of millions of your own citizens? All of these things are things Russia's did. Killing tens of millions of your own citizens, Russia did. Killing millions of Ukrainians by starving them to death, Russia did right? Siding with the Nazis. I forgot about that one. Siding with the Nazis. The Russians actually were allies of the freaking Nazis. 
for two years. They gave the Nazis permission to start World War II. Fear-mongering. Yeah, exactly. By the way, those comments you can get rid of, Ash. Because <laughs> those guys are trolls. Those are not people, di- those are not people disagreeing. Yeah. Um, no, it's absolutely God. You know, absolutely. Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars had nothing to do with nukes in space. Star Wars was about using lasers to take out uh, nuclear weapons as they were coming in. Whether you like that or not, it was totally different. Um, and it didn't work, basically. But that's what, the, that's what Reagan's Star Wars program was. So, um, ah. Now that, now I'm convinced you're a Russian troll. DJ, you're not even, you're not even Anglo. I can tell now by what you're, gaslighting is so cringe. Using two, uh, using two like slang expressions, throwing them together in a weird way. Take, take that person out mods. Yeah, that, that is, that's not even, I I love cause like I'm a big fan of studying languages and stuff. Um, who was that by the way? Louis, thank you, Louis, for the hands. Big fan of languages. Uh, thanks, Ash. And I love how with the trolls, you can often hear their accents in what they write in English. And it's like, gaslighting is so cringe. It's like, okay, it, it, what we call, if you study foreign languages or travel a lot, we call that not quite right. Where things are correct in English, but they're not correct. They're like, they're right, but they're not quite right. That, that would be, gaslighting is so cringe, right? There's something about that phrase that like, grammatically it's correct. Those are, right? Gaslighting is so cringe. Yeah, I'm not convinced about it. First of all, those are old. Gaslighting is old and cringe is old too. I doubt a teenager is saying that. Um, you know what I mean? No, yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, I guess that's true. You're in a school. But that's what I mean from the 90s. That's my point. That's what I point. It's not a, it's, it, it's a Russian. The other thing you learn with the Russians is they, um, they basically studied English decades ago. So, and the expression, my, my favorite with the expressions is, is that the, the, the expressions, they usually come from the 1950s and 60s. Uh, I do. I speak, well, I'm fluent in French and Spanish. My Italian used to be fluent. It's getting rusty. My Greek used to be fluent. It's very rusty. Um, and I studied many other, I've studied Russian. I studied Portuguese, I'm trying to remember. Hey, Andre. Um, but now I would say I'm fluent in French and Spanish. The other ones, the other ones I've got, I can still get by in Italian pretty good, but they've gotten rusty. They've gotten rusty. Vive Quebec. Oui, mais j'ai pas visité Quebec, mais j'aimerais bien. Oh, non, c'est pas vrai. C'est pas vrai. J'ai visité, uh, what, what's it called? Gatineau. <laughs> c'est le seul endroit que j'ai visité en, en francophone, en, 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 en Canada francophone. Et parle italien, si, un peu. Ouais, parlavo molto italiano, ma adesso non lo parlo con nessuno, donc è, è un po' difficile. Ma, well, non è difficile, ma dipende del, del soggetto. But anyway, yeah, Gatino. Gatino was nice though. I got, I got, uh, no Polish, no, I got uh, poutine. My only poutine I ever had was in a bar in Gatino. It was okay. German, never did learn German. I like German. Um, thank you, Cornflower. I like German. Never really. Posso parlare di italiano con te? Ah, sì? My Italian used to be very good. Ukrainski? No. No. Ja uchitsel paruski. Only one year. So, like, I've got little bits of. I, I always say, like, my Russian is okay if I'm drunk. And little expressions and words come back to me out of nowhere. Like, working on Ukraine, these Russian words would come back to me from 40 years ago. Y bueno, español sí, español hablo, hablo muy bien, sí, sí. Y francés también. You can swear in Russian? Yeah, well, I can't, I guess, well, no, I can swear in, Ukra- I guess we all can swear in Ukrainian now. <laughs> right? No Hebrew, nope, nope, never studied Hebrew. Um, but we all can swear in Ukrainian, <laughs> right? Ruski koral itzi nahui, itzi nahui, is that correct? Um, yep, I was trying to translate here, it didn't work. Armenian Russian, that's funny. That's funny. Well, probably, bec- what is interesting with foreign languages is your best foreign language influences your other languages, I find. So that my best foreign language is French. So my French would, would often influence the other, Spanish is also very good. So both of those will influence my other foreign languages. So it's either going to come off kind of Spanishy 
or maybe even Mexican because that's, you know, or Argentine would be my accent or, or French, French, French. So I'm sure my Russian is going to be, and, but I, but I, you know, but my Greek is interesting too, because my Greek is rusty. Thank you running. But I studied it for so long, so to speak, and being Greek that Russian reminds me of Greek. So I could see speaking Russian and having a little bit of a Greek thing. Yeah. German overriding English. That's funny. Um, oh no, I didn't see that Janie. No, no, I'll Google it. I mean, see, usually on Twitter, I see such things, but I didn't see that. Thank you, running for the tiny for the tiny diny. Darian for the rose. Thank you. Um, anyway, what else? Russia's losing dude. Exactly. Um, actually, I did finally. Actually, real quick. Well, we were here. It's seven twenty. We're gonna close soon. I did now. This is an interesting question. I got a new shipment of stuff from Ukraine. We do auctions occasionally. I've got to do my auctions. I do not speak sign. No, I do auctions occasionally of cool stuff from Ukraine. Now I ordered some stuff from Ukraine that I don't know if people are going to, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if people are going to like it or not. I have the, I have my box here. It literally just arrived before the show. And I'm not sure whether, I mean, it's a mixed, I will admit this. Thank you, Martin. I will admit that it's a mixed bag what I ordered, but I think it's interesting. So I did it anyway. But let me open this. It's always, these Ukrainians crack me up because they do. The Ukrainians like wrap things like nobody else. Actually, I'd like to find some of this. They wrap stuff in like this cool plastic wrap that's really good. And it, it, it's like that, you know, to wrap boxes so basically nobody can get into them and they stay shut, which is really nice. Oh my God, I'm trying to like, come on here. I'm trying to open this to show you. But as I said, it's, it's a new auction item items actually two or three of them but i'm 50 50 on how f i like it i think it's I, not like it i think it's interesting because it's a piece of history and the war but basically if i can open this oh i got little pieces too i forgot about that okay basically they're ukrainian fighter jets ukrainian migs that were shot down in ukraine might have been friendly fire might have been russian fire we don't know but I thought they were really interesting pieces. The Ukrainian colors on them. Again, you know, it's Ukrainian aircraft shut down. But I thought they were interesting, um, again, interesting sort of mementos of the war. You know, oh, did I miss a nice gift? Ah! Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, the galaxy. Thank you, Martin. You know I love the galaxy thing. Sorry about that. Thank you, Kathy, for the rose, too. That must have been Martin with the galaxy. Sorry, I was trying to get this open. Okay, so Callum, you agree. You agree. Thank you for that, Martin. Um, I, I like, again, it's, it's, it's a mix because they're Ukrainian MiGs that were shot down. But again, I look at it as paying homage, right? Rather than being like, oh, cool, Ukrainian shot down, right? Um, but I also love the coloring on there, which I think is pretty cool. Now, uh, let me see here. I've got like one or two other big... I mean, actually, this is a nice one, too. This is th that one's the really nice one. This one is still pretty nice because it's got like the streak of color on it, which is pretty cool. Actually, some interesting stuff on the back as well. Some of the I think that's some of the honeycomb type stuff that they've got. But this one's kind of neat because it's big, which I like, you know, so that one's kind of cool. Uh, hang on. And there's one more. I think it's or actually what I might have done. I may have. I'm trying to remember now because it's been a few months. I think I then purchased several smaller pieces that I still thought were cool. Let me, uh, we're having an unboxing of my Ukraine stuff. But so these are Ukraine, yeah, these are Ukrainian MiG fighter jets that were shot down, unfortunately, but the parts were interesting. Okay, like this part I like a lot because again, it's the Ukrainian colors on it, which is neat. That's a neat piece, you know what I mean? It's one piece, but it's kind of a neat, it's a neat piece because of the colors. I've got the Russian, I've got the Russian too. We've still got more of the Russian pieces. Um, I agree, better Russian. Actually, I may even wash some of these because they're dirty and I have no, I mean, washing it isn't going to ruin it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Actually, I think, you know what? I think the, uh, I think the guy I got it from even threw in some pieces for me because 
I had bought so much from him. Yeah, because these are like some little pieces to some little souvenir pieces. Anyway, I've been auctioning them off, not really selling them. I've been auctioning them. Yeah, but see, but this one, this one is, a, I mean, this is a neat piece. Also because I like that it's got more of the, I'll have to show these to, uh, um, ugh, I'm spacing out. My little buddy, my little buddy who's, uh, ah, best worst gamers. I don't know if he's on tonight because he's my uh, former U.S. military engineer who knows this stuff, you know? Um, I mean, I could leave them with the dirt. I can leave them. I, I washed some of mine because the dirt was just, was just, the, sorry about that, Tom. I apologize. I was, since I was cutting through everything, I didn't see everything. Thank you, though. Don't wash. Okay, I won't wash. I won't wash. Some of the, because, I mean, they're literally filthy, you know, that I didn't like. I mean, look at this. Like, I don't know if you can see, but, like, they're just filthy. Um, the auctions are not up yet. I've got to put up, I've got to put up new auction items because I don't have them up right now, but I will put up new ones. I'll do it tomorrow. The dirt's authentic. All right, all right. No, I agree. The dirt, the dirt is authentic because it's oily. And he was like, no, <laughs> no. Because um, they're oily, which, again, a little bit messy. But, uh, oh, that's cute. He threw in a, that's cute. He threw in, um, this is cute because I buy good stuff from this guy. He threw in the Ukrainian frig fridge magnet for free of the, uh, of the tank pulling, the, of the tractor pulling the tank. These are the refrigerator magnets from the Ukrainians. So that's very, that was very, very sweet of him. Um, hang on, there's another... Oh, these are... No, no, this is funny. See, now, actually, these could make interesting little items because he threw in a number of little pieces, but they're nice. I think because, again, I bought nice pieces from him. But these are kind of nice. It's just a little piece from the plane, but having the color is pretty cool. And having it be the Ukrainian colors, obviously, even though, again... Oh, now this was... Okay, this was an interesting extra piece I bought. Okay. This was an extra piece that I bought, and I'm forgetting... I've got to go look... I don't know anybody who speaks Ukrainian that can look at it, but this was an extra piece and I'm forgetting what it was for. I've got to Google it and or go check it out again. Can you guys, can anybody tell just by looking at it? It's a box cover, but in terms of the, I'll show you guys in a second. Actually, you guys can see it there too. In terms of the Ukrainian, is, oh, is it Russian? Ah, if it's, well, but it's a MiG, but it's a MiG. So it might be in Russian anyway, because all of Ukraine's MiGs, came from Russia. Yeah, but Yulia might not know necessarily because it's a mili it's a piece of military equipment from a plane from a military plane. Okay, electrical circuit breaker cover. Okay. And as I'm saying, they're MiGs that were made in Russia. That's why it's going to be in Russian. Yeah. 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 Actually, Vlad might know. It's fuses. Okay. Yeah. But I liked this piece because it's a nice size, but I like that it's in Russian, which is kind of cool. You know, kind of a neat, yeah, I forgot about this. That's a neat piece. Anyway, so, yeah. So I will, uh, I will put the auction, ay, ay, ay. I will put the auction items up tomorrow. Blech. Like I said, my finger, oh my God. Hold on a second. I'm getting this oil off my fingers. That's better. Blech. So yes, for mustard and the others, I will not be washing them, but they are. They're oily and dirty, and I don't like them like that. If for things that I keep, I don't like them. I'm gonna keep one. I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna keep. I'm trying not to keep too many things, but I'm gonna keep one piece for myself. Um, but that's what I figured. Ukraine wouldn't have any Ukrainian MIGs. They'd all be in Russian anyway. Yeah. The big piece again? Sure. The big. Well, the big piece, the one I like the most, is this one. This one, I think is what you mean. But it's nice because, again, it's some kind of, uh, not cover, but you actually can see the, you know what I mean? That it's the, sort of the structure of it. Well, I mean, I'll put it up tomorrow. I'll put it up. Th this one, this one's nice. I mean, I admit, trust me, I'm tempted to keep this one, but I probably won't because, you know, what's the point? You know, this is a, this is a cool one, though. Even with the, you know what I like about this one? There's something very, um, it looks like a piece of art. It looks like a piece of modern art from like, not Andy Warhol, but like one of those. You know what I mean? Um, you know, because of the, the, dot, the dots and the lines, there's something very artistic about it that I like. Any case, we'll have to see. But yeah, like I said, I've got several, oops. I've got, now this one again, if it's washed, will be really nice because it's the blue and the gold. But it's, it's, 
you know, under dirt and everything. So we'll have to see. And this one, well, and actually this one's really, but again, the color is going to be great once it's washed. I still think, I still think I would wash them to be honest, you know? Well, I was going to say that it's to the small piece. Oh, of course, now it fell through. Now it's, now it's buried under here. So, oh, here it is. True. The little piece with the Ukrainian colors is really cool. And it's nice that they're so bright. I won't wash it. Okay, I won't wash it. The ones that I've got in my cab that I did finally wash because they were just filthy. <laughs> I mean, and I don't look at these quite like antiques that people don't wash because they're planes. They were getting washed all the time until they crashed, right? Well, I guess they weren't getting washed all the time because they have oil on them. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't look at it as if it's an antique that's being washed because they're literally, you know, cars. <laughs> I hear you, Sasha. I know. Now I gotta wash my hands again. Um, anyway, okay. Well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad. I was afraid people wouldn't like them because they were Ukrainian, but I do think they're pretty cool. Um, I, I could rebuild. Right. I'm gonna rebuild a Russian or a Ukrainian MIG in my uh, <laughs> in my apartment. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's good then. All right. Good. I'm glad people like that. As I said, I have to I have to go through and keep one piece for myself, and that that we will see because. I like that it's a MIG because I've never auctioned off MIG pieces before. You've flown a MIG. Get out. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Where, where did you get to fly a MIG? Just curious. I mean, are you Eastern European or are you American? If you can say. Um, but um, um, but, the, uh, but, I, but I've, in the U.S. Oh, in, oh interesting. That's very interesting. Um, the dirt is part of the... I agree. It's just, as I said, the other pieces I had were so gunky that I didn't like the dirt and oil on them, but, but the ones I kept. In any case, I'm going to keep one of these pieces. I'll decide. I think I may keep the second piece. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I don't... Let me double check. Hang on. I want to see my sort of message from the guy I got it from. I'm trying to remember here. Because once I get these pieces, then I usually put... Like, he was not sure on how the plane was shot down. He said it could have been friendly fire, it could have been the Russians. I think it's MiG 29s. Um, let me see here. Let me see. Let me see. Um, hang on a sec. Sasha, stop, please. Oh my God. Oh, that's right. I have a separate. I forgot. I did buy a separate package of um, uh, Russian MREs. But let's see if they arrive, because you never know what this stuff is, if it's going to arrive. Um, these are MiG-29s. We don't know much more about it. Um, yeah, this one, like I said, the, the one with the, the fuse cover is definitely MiG-29. Oh, yeah, he was actually he translated the inscription fuses attention connect the cable connectors in strict accordance with the diagram. OK, so, yeah, clearly you guys were right, of course, clearly is fuses fusions fuses. Um, everything's MiG-29. Yeah. Yep. Everything's a Ukrainian MiG-29. So. And then, like I said, I'm getting an MRE set, which I think will be kind of cool. Um, that should be kind of neat. So. Now, wait, is this piece still coming? Oh, no, that one already came. That's the one, I would say that's the one Mustard got, I think. Yeah, the piece of the, uh, the top of the periscope thing. That's right, that's what you already got. Um, anyway, all right, well, I'm glad you guys were interested. That's good to hear. So, well, we're at the end now, Rebecca. So I, I, started, it, uh, I started an hour and a half ago. So that's why, that's why we're now not doing anything. The audience is impressive. Well, the audience is always interesting because it, I think maybe it's the nature of the show since we talk about Ukraine and the war, that there's always an interesting number of people who are experts at different things, which is kind of fun, you know? Because as I say, I admit, I'm not a military, I, I am a foreign policy expert, I'm not a military expert. But I'm also not an expert on every foreign policy topic. Um, so it's always interesting to get people here who kind of, you know, know stuff, but also you guys can Google stuff while I'm talking, which helps too, you know? Russian MREs are just one potato. I hope I get the Russian MRE thing. You never, supposedly, supposedly, thank you, Cecil. Appreciate the gift. <laughs> um, supposedly the Russian MRE packet, there, there might be a bigger problem getting that by Ukrainian customs, which I thought was hilarious. That Ukraine's okay with like shot down pieces of planes, but, but the Russian, uh, Russian meals for the troops might be a problem. 
which I just think is funny. You know, you should have known it was a fuse box. Well, can you do you speak Russian to the Kiwi? I mean, being Estonian, maybe you do. Uh, hey, Robert, although your language is, I'm going to assume that your languages aren't close enough because are, you guys are more like the Finns, right? So you, your language must be, God, no, that's what I thought. Yeah, the language has got to be significantly different. Um, is there any, is any of the Balt, any of the Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, are any of you, your language close enough to understand Russian or is it just totally different? Um, just curious. Right. What about the other two? What about Latvia and Lithuania? Is there any similarity or not at all? Because that's what I thought. Totally different. Okay. That's what I thought. Cause you guys are, I mean, I never think of you guys as being close to Russia, Belarus. Sure. Right. Um, you know, okay. Okay. And thank you, Sean, by the way. Um, you know, that sliver of Russia land is Kaliningrad. I think is what you mean. That little bit in, in sort of Europe, right off of Poland and Lithuania. Don't know what that means, Anel. I don't know what that means. That, do, that, that sentence doesn't quite make sense. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Um, all right, guys. I think we're going to, yeah, thanks guys for joining. I think we're going to call it quits. Estonian isn't related to any other language except Hungarian and Finnish. Some smaller languages too. That's interesting. Hungarian, that's interesting too. Like why that's connected. Huh. Oh, oh, show the map again? Yes. I, uh, yes, where's the... Actually, I, well, I've got this map. I didn't show the Ukraine map tonight. We were doing this one because we were talking about Europe. Well, and there's the countries we're talking about. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Russia. Bad. Um, Estonia has a border with Russia. Yes, as does, what is it, Latvia. And Lithuania does not. But Latvia and Estonia do. But Lithuania still got to deal with the Belarusians, which is kind of like dealing with the Russians, sadly. Anyway, all right, guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you for all the gifts. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I know. Happy. This is what we all do on Valentine's Day. Hey, what do you do? <laughs> you know? Um, but thanks for joining, guys. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow. All right? And do follow, as always. Always forget to mention that. But do give a quick, give a like, give a follow, all that stuff. Thank you, Joe, for the gifts. Um, Latvian and Lithuanian are similar, but you can't understand each other fully. That's interesting. Thank you, Lucy. Um, yeah, no, it's very, it's kind of interesting in a way too that like English, that, that English, I guess, interestingly enough, English isn't close enough to any language for us to understand each other, which is kind of fascinating, you know, that other languages, like that other languages have that, although it depends. Thank you, for Robert, for the hearts. Because even like Spanish and Portuguese, the, the, I believe what I recall when I was in Brazil, the, I was living in Argentina for a while, working, and then went to Brazil. The Brazilians could understand Spanish, but the Spanish, the Argentines, the Argentines had a hard time understanding Portuguese. So it's kind of interesting, that whole thing, you know? But interesting, like for us, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Sir SR, Ginger. Um, but for us, it's interesting because there's no other language other than English that we could hear and go, oh, I understand that language. <laughs> You know, but I don't know what it's like. I'm curious what it's like for, you know, Spanish and Italian. I mean, I speak both languages, but whether whether without studying it at all, you can understand somewhat of each other. You know what I mean? Spanish and Italian speakers. But I'm talking a native Spanish speaker or a native Italian, not somebody like us who study. If you study both, then then it's interesting. But. But if you just speak one, can you understand the other? Greek is hard? Yeah, I'd think so. Yeah. The problem is Greek's grammar is like German grammar. It's, and like Russian grammar. It's all the, I say German grammar from what I know. I know Russian. I don't know German. But it's all the declensions. So your nouns change based on, on, on uh, uh, your dad would know? Okay. The nouns change based on how they're used in the sentence. And I could never remember in, in Greek, at least, I finally went to Greece for four months and a lot of it made sense, made more sense hearing it. But like the name George or John, you'd say different based on <laughs> how it's used. You know, is it, is it, my name is John? Is it John? Is it, you're calling me? Is it, um, this is, or George, I say, my name is George. George, this is George's ball. Give the ball to George. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, and they're all different. Oh my God, I hear, Ukrainian does it too? I'm sure you do because of Russian, yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it drives me crazy. Interesting. Your dad spoke French and could, could, could understand Castilian Spanish, but not as much Mexican. That's funny. That's interesting. Because I find Mexican, then again, I studied Spanish here. Mexican Spanish, much easier to, Mexicans have a wonderful accent. Very easy and, and very clear pronunciation. Versus Spain? <laughs> now, it depends where in Spain, but still. I find Spaniards harder to understand. Um, oh, I have to show you really quick because the dog's looking adorable down here. She's sleep, sleeping in her little cat bed. But uh, hold on, it's cute. I don't know if you can fully appreciate the, uh, because what's cute is that her, oops, I've got it, hold on, I've got it sideways here. She's got like, she's like sleeping on her foot kind of, which is cute. It's like a little, if you could see, she's like got her foot under her face, which is very cute in her little cat bed. It's very sweet. So my dog cracks me up. Oh, you guys, it's a little hard. Hold on. I always have to, for you guys, I always have to lower the, there we go. Lower the light so you can see there. Now you can see, eh, still out of focus a little bit. Well, not too bad. For you guys, it's a little out of focus. Anyway, yeah, it's very cute. She's very cute. Anyway, all right, guys. Um, all right. So you've seen three videos telling you not to panic. What is going on? Uh, okay, last little thing. What is going on is there are reports that the Russians are planning to put nuclear weapons in space, which is a bad thing. <laughs> um, it isn't happening yet. They may not even be able to do it yet, capably, but they're working on it and planning to do it. And a top Republican congressman kind of let it slip today without giving the details, but said the Russians are working on something incredibly dangerous that we need to talk about. Um, and I'm kind of glad he did. I'm kind of glad he did because I think, um, I th and, and honestly, this is part of the Biden administration, sadly, doing their, well, you've either got the MAGA Republicans not wanting to talk about this because they don't want to criticize Putin, right? Or, because Trump will get mad, or you've got the Biden administration not wanting to talk about it because, you know, let's not antagonize Putin, right? They want to they wanna try to work with him. And again, working with people is great, but way too much of Biden not wanting to make Putin upset. So I guarantee you, Biden won't want to talk about it for that reason, you know? Um, but the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> so how can it explode? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, well, I don't know how nuclear weapons work, but I mean, things do blow up and I mean, right? Well, think about it. Satellites. How is there all the, well, I, what do mean how it can it explode? Why wouldn't it be able to explode? Why not? First of all, a vacuum means it's dying to explode. Are you saying there's no oxygen? Why would a nuclear explosion need oxygen, right? I mean, I don't know how nuclear explosions work, but a nuclear bomb doesn't need oxygen to go off, does it? Right? Or does the starter? I don't know. I don't know how they do it. They're working on it however they're going to do it. Um, you know? Well, we were saying that satellites, I Googled, I Googled, I did an Alexa search. Satellites are anywhere from like 160 to several hundred miles in space. So, right? Jeffrey says oxygen not needed. So, yeah. But these aren't fires. That's what I mean. This is a nuclear explosion, right? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Vlad, I'm, I'm a medical student. <laughs> I'm a medical student, not a nuclear scientist, not a nuclear physicist, Jim. Um, yeah, yeah, they would need, I assume, some kind of starter, again, very little I know about nuclear bombs, but some kind of starter explosion thing, I seem to remember, a trigger or something with a nuclear bomb, and then the bomb itself doesn't need oxygen. But I don't know whether that starter thing does or not necessarily either. Actually, chemical... It depends. I don't even know how nuclear bombs are started, but chemical explosions don't need oxygen, I assume, you know, right? I mean, it would be a very small sun. The question is, how do you start a sun type explosion, right? That's the question. How do you begin nuclear explosions? What do you need to be? Not that we want to be discussing this too much publicly, <laughs> but, uh, but right. Like how do you, anybody who's a physicist here, um, it does not need oxygen. Darren says, quite authoritatively. Um, I don't, this is like a topic I don't want to Google, by the way. 
<laughs> I don't want this in my Google. Thank you. D D Danielle just said the same thing. Things I don't want in my Google history. That's exactly it. One of you Google this. <laughs> hey, Alexa. <laughs> um, you know, the, um, I mean, oh, man. If nuclear, though, no, no oxygen needed. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Um. I just don't, I, I, I don't know enough. We'd have to get somebody who knows. I mean, we're all sort of conjecturing here, but anybody who does know, the, there must be one of you who knows the physics. Um, it doesn't need oxygen, it just needs to believe in itself. All right. Okay. Um, well, we were saying that the space could be an EMP. One of the articles was saying, and this is a conjecture at this point, one of the articles was saying that the idea was the nuclear radiation somehow interfering with the satellites, that it wasn't even the explosion, it was the radiation. Or again, it could be the electromagnetic pulse taking them out as well. So who knows? You know, you think now it depends, I guess, how wide the pulse goes too. I don't know how wide, how wide. Um, God, I don't know if Alexa can figure this out. Alexa, how wide can an electromagnetic pulse go from a nuclear explosion? Hmm, I don't have an answer. Yeah, I didn't think you would. Um, somebody want to Google before we go real quick? How... Um, how far would the EMP effect go from a nuclear explosion? Now, again, it's going to depend on the size of the bomb, but I'm wondering, like, how big of a, how big of an explosion that is, or I mean, how far it travels. I know it's going to depend on the yield is the problem, you know. Chat, chat, GPT. I don't have Chat GPT though. Although Chat GPT may not like to answer it either. Um. Yeah, the starfish. Pro this was interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like the radius, yeah. Ke uh, Kepi says, the Starfish Prime test in 1962 detonated a 1.4 megaton bomb at 400 kilometers altitude. So that's three, well, 200 miles-ish. Um, while it caused no direct harm to people on Earth, it damaged several satellites and created an artificial radiation something, belt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, my guess is you're going to see a lot more reporting on this tomorrow of just what EMPs are and everything else and how far they can go and everything else, right? Um, all right, guys. All right, I'm going to go. Oh, excuse me. We've been doing... All right, actually, we're almost doing two hours again. Stop it. <laughs> I know, you need a drink. I know. I needed a drink after putting together my IKEA furniture yesterday, those cabinets. That, that's what gave me needing a drink. Oh, my God. I know. We did try to hang up 30 minutes ago, and then we just started talking about EMPs and everything else, and it just kept going and languages. So, all right. Now I'm hanging up. Good to see you all. Look for me tomorrow, 6 o'clock Eastern Time, U.S. I'll be back. Somebody Google how you explode nuclear weapons and whether you need oxygen, and we can find it. Yes, I got some new display cases from IKEA. And they were not fun to put together as only Ikea can be. Easy, but not really, but not really, you know? So first one was two and a half hours. Second one was an hour. Still, I felt like I needed a drink afterwards. So, all right, guys, have a good night. All right, see everybody. All right, bye, y'all.